Okay, in this video we're going to go over the uh, QuickBooks Statement Writer. It used to be called the Intuit Statement Writer um, and it's a great little add-on. It comes standard with QuickBooks Enterprise and any Accountants Edition and I believe you can still purchase it for the Pro and Premier Edition. But you come in here under Reports and you have your QuickBooks Statement Writer. Okay, so the first thing you should always do is go into the Preferences all right, so you have your general preferences, which says what are your default locations, where do you want to save your reports or your templates, all right? Your details, so you can enter your details, so this will flow through onto the reports if you're doing a review or something like that. And this is for the accountant, of course, to fill in their information to say who's producing this report. You have some formats that you can choose. Use smart underlines, so based on totals and subtotals. Do you want your decimals to show? Do you want the column headers on each page? Do you want to show an active account, zero balance accounts? How do you want to show zero balance accounts as? Do you want to leave it blank, do zero? How do you want to show negative numbers? And then also if you have you know, hundreds of thousands in all of your different uh, accounts or balances, then you might want to divide it by a thousand, okay? You have styles in here, which will show you, uh, you know, on each of the different headers and the columns and all the totals and the amounts, you can change the different styles. So you can change the format um, and the font and the color. Uh, and then we have some resources in here, some frequently asked questions, some uh, templates that Intuit already has pre-built. Um, you can download and frequently um, ask questions and tips. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay. Now you can open a new report, which we'll do after we complete one, um, but what you first have to do is go in and design your report. Okay, so I'm gonna click on design report. You choose what period, what month, quarter, 13 week quarter, which is really neat, fiscal year, last year, this year. I'm gonna go ahead and say this month. You do have the basis over here, so you can choose cash versus accrual. Be sure to check out our video on cash versus accrual in QuickBooks. And then you have all these different statement and document templates that you can choose. So you've got balance sheet, selected year, selected year two column, previous year with variance, all these different options. And we're gonna scroll down some more. You've got cash flow statements, budget to actual statements, retained earnings statements, cover letters, audit reports, compilation reports, review reports, and other documents down here. And then, of course, custom templates. So I'm just going to do um, with selected period and prior period, add it to my contents over here. Notice that I can add multiple reports, and it'll do it on multiple tabs. Okay. You can narrow down the statements that are sh shown up here. So you can narrow them down. You want to see all statements, all statements and documents, all documents. Okay. And then you have to give the report a name. Okay. And then you can save the change to location. So I'm going to change this just so it's easy to find. Put it under demo files. Okay. And we'll say next. All right. So here you can insert columns. It gives you a quick way to insert the column. I'm going to say I want to insert a blank column, uh, a column with their account numbers. You know how we always have an issue with getting account numbers and um, the information on the same screen. QuickBooks data, some kind of QuickBooks data, a variance column, a percentage of whole, a grand total column. Okay, you can, it goes to you the current year in front and the previous year next to it, so I can move that column to the left or the right. I can delete columns in here, um, and then I can also change the column dates. Okay, so it's doing current year period and previous year period. All right. So let's go ahead and insert a column with a variance. Okay, so it's gonna give me the formulas in there. It shows me that. So I'm gonna go ahead and say next. It's gonna take me to rows. All right, so right here, it shows me this row actually was rolled up. So all of these sub accounts under construction income were rolled up into this account. So I have the options here to uh, move the rows up and down. So if I don't want construction up top, I wanna to move it down. Okay, I don't want to see, I'm not quite sure why general and admin expenses is showing up in income, so I want to delete that row. Okay, um, now I can 
separate out accounts. So if this one, how it has all of those rolled up into one, I can separate it out and then they're not rolled up. If I wanna highlight uh, this account, multiple accounts, I can combine them again so they all roll back up, all right? You can drag and drop, which makes it nice, nice easy way to move things around. You can uh, rename columns. If you didn't want to call this revenue, you wanted to call it income, you can change that there. Any of these accounts, you can change the names for them. All right. Then we can also notice that you have some other accounts. So if you have some balance sheet accounts, for example, that you wanted to add to this for some reason, or you deleted some accounts, you wanted to bring them back, you can go ahead and drag and drop it onto, onto the form here. Okay, that's already in there, so it's saying, why are you doing that? Um, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and say next. Then you have your headers, so up top here, what it says, what information it has. You can insert a header or footer field, so you can insert um, date prepared, you know, basis, page numbers, column duration, company name, some different information here. Uh, you can change, again, the fonts on all these different areas. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and say next again and you have re your review and finish. So we're gonna go ahead and create the report. Now it's gonna open up. Notice you do have to have Excel on your, on your computer to be able to do this. So if you have a hosted file, um, you might wanna talk to your hosting provider about getting Excel. Okay, so it's gonna open up into Excel here with all of our information and the report that we just built. It takes just a second to load up because it's got to do that connection. What it's doing right now actually is it's actually forming the connection to QuickBooks Financial so that we can uh, go and change things in QuickBooks Financial and it'll automatically update. Now it took us through that whole setup, which is nice because we can set up the file itself. However, all of that information, all the things we just set up are also available once we have the file open over here. So we can go in and uh, change report properties, add additional columns, change things around. Um, so we're gonna unhide these columns. I'm not sure why they were hidden. Now you can, um, you can hide columns if you want to, um, but you don't always necessarily need to, but it'll save the format that you save it in. So if I save this now, anytime I open this back up, it'll save there. Uh, let's add a column over here called calculation. Okay, so let's just say that I wanted to do a summary Okay, I wanted to do a summary here. I'm gonna add calculation, I'm gonna do a summary, in income, cogs, expense, net. Okay, and this calculation is going to then take, I'm gonna do a sum of my income, total revenue, okay. Uh, let's unhide all of these columns just so I know what we're doing here. All right, so I have a sum of my income, my cost of goods sold. I'm gonna have a sum there. I do all equals and do a sum of my cost of goods sold here. And I'm gonna do a sum of my expenses by pushing all equals and highlighting the expenses. And then I'm gonna actually do a net that takes this minus this minus that. Okay, not doing so good there. We have too much uh, expense down here. Okay, so again, we can, um, if I wanted to say roll up, I don't wanna see these um, in the same rows. I wanna see it just as one row. I can go down here to my row properties and I can, um, combine the accounts from the selected rows so they'll all roll up into one. 
Okay. Now I'm going to save this report and we're going to go ahead and close out of it. And I'm going to go into QuickBooks here and just make a couple uh, journal entries to show some activity and then we'll show you how it saves and updates the report. So I'm going to make it as of today and we're going to do some income. We're going to credit income because that makes income go up by 250000 50,000. We're going to do uh, up, let's up the cost of goods sold. Job materials cost is at 15,000. And we're going to up also the uh, advertising promotion cost by 15,000. And let's do a couple more here. We're going to up the, um, let's say, subcontractor costs is. 25,000. Again, this is just to get some data in there. This is not a good way to, <laughs> to change your accounts. So we'll put in there some depreciation expense of 5,000 and the rest I'm going to stick to retained earnings for now. Okay, so save and close. All right, now we're going to go into the QuickBooks Statement Writer again. And we're going to open up a report that we have. Now it keeps for me my reports right here in a little drop down, or I can browse to open it up. So I'm going to open up the one we just created, the profit and loss. Okay, so now what it's doing, it's opening the report. It pulled it open based on what I had right now, but it also has, has the ability to refresh data from QuickBooks. So notice, all of that information that I just stuck in there to the different accounts, the $20,000 in here gives me the breakdown, the $15,000 to advertising promotion, $5,000 to depreciation in construction income, uh, how I raise my construction income. It automatically raises it here and it keeps the formats for me so that I can easily um, pull up these reports again. Okay, so that is a quick look at the Intuit Statement Writer.